Welcome back to PSC TechPi. Today we keep on talking about how to develop professional adaptive card extensions using SharePoint Framework. And specifically, I want to explain you how you can easily consume third-party APIs, which can be, for example, Azure Functions or ASP.NET Core APIs or whatever else you make available through a REST endpoint. In order to consume such kind of APIs from an adaptive card extension, you will need to register an application in Azure Active Directory if you want to do it securely and secure with Azure AD. You will have uh, to configure proper permissions uh, for your solution. So going under the Web API permission request section of the package solution file, you will have to configure the permission that you need. If the solution will be a multi-tenant one, the application register in Azure ID will have to be consented in the tenant where you want to use it. And then you can register the SPPKG of your adaptive card extension in the app catalog and you can grant the permissions defined in the Web API permission request for your solution. Once you've done that, using the AAD HTTP client object that you can create using the AAD HTTP client factory that you have in the context of SharePoint framework, you can easily consume your target API. So, like always, let me move to the demo environment. Let me show you how to do that in practice. So here you can see the adaptive card extensions in action. And it is just a sample card which will show you the quote of a set of stocks uh, on the market. Now, how does it work? Well, from a configuration point of view, if we edit this page, we can see that this adaptive card extension is configured to have a target uh, URL for the API that we are going to consume. And we provide a list of stock symbols to query through the API. Then in the back end, we have an Azure function that is just a fictitious one in which I simply provide an hard coded value for all of the stocks, just for the sake of making an example. So I get a symbol and I give back the value of that uh, uh, quote symbol. Simple as that. However, the uh, function app has been configured as an app in Azure Active Directory. So if I go here in the Azure Active Directory backing my target tenant, we can see that we have an application registered with a specific client ID and the target tenant ID, which is the one in which we are right now. And from an exposing API point of view, I am exposing a permission scope called read.stockquote under this application unique URI for my application. The uh, function app uh, uh, providing this uh, function is configured in uh, an Azure uh, infrastructure. I have uh, the uh, stock quote function, and from an authentication point of view, it is configured to use exactly that application that I showed you in Azure Active Directory for authentication. So I'm using a easy out configuration because I'm relying on a single tenant uh, application right now. So. Uh, let's move to the SharePoint Framework Adaptive Card Extension Implementation and see how we can leverage this uh, kind of uh, registered application. So here I am in the Adaptive Card Extension where I configure the properties, where I have the service URL and the symbols, the array of symbols, actually it's just a string that I will split later on. And then we have the state where we uh, keep track of the current symbol, the quote and the trend up or down. And then we have the definition of a stock quote info, which is exactly what we get back from the API that we are going to consume. Then we have an AAD uh, client object of type AAD HTTP client that we will create on init of our adaptive card extension using the AAD HTTP client factory with the get client method and providing the unique URI of the API that we want to consume. So that this object will be uh, the one we will use to consume the API. Then asynchronously, we start consuming the API to get the quote. So the load quote method will go, if the uh, symbol and the URL are defined, we'll go through all of the symbols one by one and get their real time, supposed to be real time value. How? Well, splitting the quotes and getting the current quote and then saying this dot AD client, so using the AD HTTP client instance, get, so making a get request for the URL of the service followed by the symbol we want to query. Then we get back a JSON response, which is of type stock quote info. And with the stock quote info, we can set the state of our adaptive card extension. And then we schedule another query for the following stock symbol within the next five seconds, and so on and so forth. 
Then when we have the state configured uh, with the stock value, we can render it in the card view. In the card view, we decided, uh, I decided to use a base primary text card view as the base type for my card view. And I'm simply configuring the primary text uh, with the symbol. And in the description, I simply provide if the trend is up or down and the quote in US dollars for my stock. So that back in the UI, we can see this kind of behavior. Okay, so uh, really simple, really straightforward. Of course, you can also use the state uh, in a quick view if you want to have a more advanced layout for the output, but in this really simple scenario, I wanted to focus on how to consume the API. One missing part of the story is the configuration in the package solution.json file of the web API permission requests. So you have to say that you want to consume this app. This is the name of the app in Azure Active Directory, so this value that you see in display name, and then the read.stockquote is the permission scope that I configured in the expose and API section of my API. And again, as a reminder, if you are working in a single tenant, that's enough. You create the SPPKG file, you upload it in the app catalog, and you will have to go to the admin page of SharePoint Online and grant to the API access page the permission. If you are working in a multi-tenant solution and your API is a multi-tenant one, <coughs> in all the other tenants, you will have, first of all, to consent to the uh, app in order to register the app in the target tenant. And then you will be able to grant uh, the permission request uh, declared in the web API permission request. Once you have done that, you can easily consume the target API using a DHTP client and making your HTTP REST request. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it useful and I'm really looking forward to seeing you next week. And remember, subscribe to this channel. Thank you.